It's 7.33 p.m. meeting of the tree committee. Um, thank you all for coming. Is there anyone here to make comments from residents before we get move on? Anyone else out there, Nora? Robert Stark is there, but he's not raising his hand. Okay. Robert, should you decide to speak, let us know. Gail, I'm going to make you co-host because I just had a little internet message that I have unstable internet and that okay. way it'll keep, it'll, it'll stay. So I'm going to make Okay. You okay. Um, I'm going to be muted unless I need to say something because I'm eating my dinner. So sorry okay. about that. Everyone. Love. Love. Okay. okay. I, I want to, I told Dennis that if he would come, I would move his part, which is talking about the hotline up in the agenda. Um, and that way, I hope he stays for the whole meeting, but in case he, you know, we never run to 1145, but just in case he is tired because he's got it. Sorry, I just got bumped out for so some reason you, and then read I'm, I'm trying to make you co-host. Okay, now you're co-host. Okay. 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 Yes. okay. So Dennis and Marlene oh, and actually- George Latimer's on, so I'm gonna elevate George. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's, well, wait a minute, Dennis. <laughs> Hi, George. Hey folks, how you doing? Hi, Nora, thank you. Well, yeah, thank you for coming. Hi, George, thank you for attending. I always like to pop in every so often, see if there's something you want the county to do. There's always something we want the county to do. <laughs> to have something to do with money, perhaps. Yeah, usually. <laughs> yeah, did you have anything specific you wanted to bring up before we? No, I was going to listen. You know, I was going to listen about 15, 20 minutes, just get a gist of things. And if there is anything that's county related, let me know. If not, uh, it's just nice to uh, see you guys. It's nice to see you. I don't actually think we have some specific county things here, although that might change. Um, you've actually come on a really, I think it's a really good night because as I was pulling the agenda together, at the end of it, I realized that it was practically a hymn of praise about all the things the village is now doing to protect the trees at every stage of their existence, you know, the planting and watering and the pruning. And so the first person actually that we have this evening is Dennis Strutton, who's the assistant building inspector. Is that it, Dennis? Um, to talk about a hotline that they're installing um, as a result of our new tree law, which we're very proud of, George. That's and, great. Yeah. And um, Dennis, can you talk a little bit about what it does and and how people will use it, what happens? Are you there? Yes, hi. So um, we're still in the beginning stages of, of forming a, uh, a uniform calling list. Uh, we're, we're still very green in the process of it. Currently residents can call the building department during the normal operation hours. Um, I have made my cell phone uh, publicly available for anybody that has any tree issues, cutting, pruning, uh, so at least can come to my attention if I'm in the village or outside of the village. So you know, some direction can be formed. Den Dennis, excuse me, is that, these are issues having to do with things that might be violations of the tree law, you know, cutting trees, is that what it's for? Oh, we can't hear you, Dennis. Yeah, he's muted. You're oh. muted. Still can't hear it. One of those exciting things about Zoom. <coughs> Can we unmute him? No. Thanks. I actually needed that prompt. I okay. appreciate it. Yes, yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. So um, I'm having some difficulty with my devices as, as the public and everyone on the board can see. So bear with me. Um, so yeah, in, in any violations that will be issued right now, they come through the building department. So if it's pruning the removal of a tree in the process of removing, removing a tree and, and halting the, the cutting or pruning of a tree would go through uh, the building department. Uh, Jerry Barbario, the village manager, 
he is actually the, the, the main source of boots on the ground right now as a permit application will come in. Um, he will, uh, he's a licensed arborist with the state of New York um, and a couple more other licenses he has, I believe. And he goes to site and puts eyes on a application that comes in. But um, as for violations, stopping the tree, that would come through the building department. So currently what happens is that someone would call the building department and it would have to be normal hours and so as it exists currently, yeah. um, they're calling the building department, which is the 914-777-7731 uh, number. That's, that's what's happening currently. Mm -hmm. um, the police um, would also be able, what we're working for is having the police being able to respond uh, if a tree is being removed and if they cannot show a permit, uh, this is still in the process, uh, mm -hmm. If they cannot uh, show a permit that has been issued, um, the, the potential is there for them to say, hey, you know, you, you have to file a permit, let's stop the job. And then they would have to resource back to the building department to file that application. Okay. Hi, Dennis, I'm the secretary. I just wanted to confirm something. Um, you said something about your cell phone. Could you clarify what you were saying about your cell phone with regards to these calls? So we, we had a, uh, an incident uh, about three weeks ago. Um, um, and I, I put my phone out there. I'll, I'll give you my, my number so it's at least available to the board and to any listeners and if you wanna publish it in any way. Uh, it's 914-330. 6753. So in, in talking with Beverly, um, I mentioned if any residents or anybody who has any notion that a tree is being removed, um, you know, my number, my cell phone number to be readily available for them uh, until we have a, a call center or a directive. And as the, the board was saying, a hotline. Um, so once again, we're very green with it right now. We're in the beginning stages. And uh, once everything is finalized with uh, the village manager's office and the building department, then we can come to you and propose something a little bit more um, quicker or a quicker response. Yeah, that would be great because it. Uh, oh, Ellen. I was just going to say, so people can call the office or call his cell phone, which or is great. And I, I, I do want to say, I thought you guys turned this around really quickly. This is great. Yeah, there's, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of logistics um, that it does need to run through, but you know, having, you know, I have my cell with me all the time. Um, I receive calls you know, day and night and some are of importance. Some are just, you know, somebody looking for an inspection at, uh, you know, 8.30, 10 o'clock at night thinking it's the office line. Those things happen. and. Um, but I think once we establish a hotline where either they're calling the police department and we get a direction, we can get a call and get somebody out there. So. That's good, because the tree can come down fairly quickly. Um, and, and once you have this set up, we should think about how to get it out to the public so that people, so it's readily available and so they know that it even exists. Uh, one of the ways that um, people have been reporting <coughs> possibly um, un unpermitted takedowns has been by calling members of this committee or emailing us. And by the time we check our email and then we figure out what to do with it and send it over to your department, it, it, all you can do is measure the stump to see if it was, um, to see if it, how big it might've been. So it would be nice because if it really moves quickly, it could in fact be quite possible to interrupt um, a tree being taken down at least until they've filed for a permit and possibly to stop one that is a protected tree. 
That's great. Thank you. Is there any, anyone else have questions for Dennis or no? Okay. Okay, I think we'll move on unless you have more to say to us, Dennis. I, I'm really happy with this. So um, yeah, I'd like to talk about the okay. violations. Oh yeah, sure, great. So, you know, if the tree does come down and they are found that the tree was wrongfully cut down and in good shape over the uh, eight inch diameter, um, which is, you know, just the same size as the sheet as paper, which was pretty brilliant by using that as a tool of measurement because everybody has a piece of paper pretty much readily available, you know. Um, you know, they, they will go through court uh, and be processed the way it should be done to make sure that they come correct or uh, the new plantings are put into place through legal. Of course, this still relies on people telling you about it because none, not one single person here is gonna, can, you know, none of us can see it everywhere we have to hear from people when it's going on but i'm hoping that um residents in the village are getting more and more aware of number one the value of the trees and number two the fact that some of them are protected so it's it's an evolving thing anything more No, I, I'm I'm here for you. Um, I will stay on the, the Zoom um, just to hear the rest of your agenda. Yeah. No, um, it's really nice to have uh, have you questions. know our point of view on the trees is okay. The next thing that we have on the agenda um, is correspondence from residents. Um, these were circulated. Uh, the first one is actually, is it's attachment two, and it's actually a very long series of correspondence. Um, uh, someone who lives on Melbourne Avenue uh, emailed the committee a week ago, maybe, or possibly a little more, because a tree, well, several large trees have been taken down by the village on Melbourne, but one of them in particular, we had known about in advance from Jerry because it was it was leaning, I believe. It's right across from the nursery school, and it was there seemed to be a risk that it would fall. It's in his his um, explanation is in the attachment that you received. So they felt that it was a danger, and um, the tree was taken down a few weeks ago, but the company that took it down left sort of a disc of one of the branches hanging in the wires. And I could not understand what she was talking about until I finally got over to Melbourne and remembered to look up. And in fact, what had happened is that over the years, the tree had grown around the wire. So um, <laughs> the piece of the tree was secure at the moment, but it was certainly large enough that it would cause a great deal, could, could cause a great deal of damage if it fell finally in a windstorm, for example, or as it got older. And so I notified, this it's this whole part of the saga, I notified Jerry about it and he had someone figure out whose wire it was. It was not a Con Ed wire, it's, it was lower. And it was also not something the village would do, which was to mess with wires. They're owned by different companies. So they identified the owner and it was, I believe, a, a company I don't remember the name of, but related to Verizon because about a day and a half later, I walked by and there were three trucks there and about five crew members there working very hard and finally removed this piece of wood. So, um, we got a great turnaround there. I was I was really happy with that once we knew about it. Um, um, excuse uh, me, Bev. I I now can share the agenda if you like. Everyone has the agenda. I read the agenda. Why don't you share the attachments as they come along? Ah, that's a little harder at the moment. <laughs> I'll work on it. Okay. Um, the next correspondence, uh, the, the only other correspondence we have this time 
is from the resident at 130 Beach um, telling us about the fact that a tree had come down on Melbourne. And as I told you, there had been, the village had in fact already told us the reason for that and the fact that it was hazardous and in a location where they really didn't want a hazardous tree. Um, in old business, um, a couple of trees for maintenance, removal, or evaluation. Um, these are not attachment scale. Um, 749 Leaker, this was yours actually with Jerry. Um, it's across from 749 Bleaker, as I recall, in the right of way. And he had been planning to inspect. There were a lot of trees that you said were marked to come down and you had asked whether they could in fact be saved through pruning and he was going to inspect them. I don't think he had time to do that yet because he was out sick for a while. I but, haven't heard back from him about yeah, it. And yeah. I had asked if I, can, if I could accompany him uh, okay. when he looks at them. Yeah, maybe you wanna get in touch with him about that. Okay. He said he was planning to. It's a whole line of mature trees that's so worth doing. And also on, um, 1505 Harrison Avenue, there is an application that came in to remove two protected trees, one of which the application says is located near the house, um, which if it's within 10 feet would mean that it could definitely be taken down. And one because it is the other tree, which is quite large, is an ash tree and is showing decay. And as we know that emerald ash borer is among us, I. Don't, I, I don't know that that one, that application had been processed yet, but they both sound as if they would be legitimate, although they'd have to be inspected to make sure it's really true. Um, on the tree law, things that have happened with the tree law, um, we did send the planning board revisions to the board of trustees. Nora, did the board have it? What did they do? Uh, you're muted, Nora. Okay. They're on the agenda for Monday. They're on the work session for Monday. Okay. Most of these, there were a few changes. Like I had an inconsistency in one place compared to another and I corrected it. And there were a couple of others like that, but most of them were to make um, consistency with other village laws. Um, another on the tree law, then is that this is this is very gratifying 1037 Orienta Avenue. Um, a tree removal application was denied on March 8th. It they provided a great deal of paperwork. It's um another redevelopment of property. I think Wendy had told us about that, alerted us to it last month. And they sent in a lot of paperwork, including a map of the property showing the locations of all the trees and the size of all the trees, and then listing the ones to come down. And there were eight on that list. I think there were 12 to come down, so it's clear cutting. But eight of them were above the eight inch threshold, so it would have been protected. So this application has been denied. Um, also, it may have involved the zoning code in which it was removing more than 25% of the vegetation. Um, and then another thing that I sent out this afternoon actually um, is an application that came in from 1505 Stony Brook, which was denied. In this case, they were referring back to, well, in this case, they said that 12 trees on their property were menacing the power lines and needed to be removed as an emergency removal. And the point was made that one might have been believable, but 12 was clear cutting. So this one was also denied. So there's are two cases already where we've, through this law, been able to um, prevent clear cutting on property. Um, have an update on the student action, the Rynek Action Research Student Survey of the village. They're preparing to sort of find out what people think about trees and what they might like or what they don't like about it so that we can figure out um, how to better 
present what we're trying to accomplish and to gain their support, change their thinking, make them feel good about what they're doing. And the situation on that is that they, there was a delay there. They sent me a draft of it for corrections, which I made and sent back. And then I was waiting to hear from them again. And then they had winter break. And then I got an email from the advisor telling me that they were waiting to find out what the village thought of it. So I immediately sent it on to the village. Jerry read it, approved it. And it's going to be posted on, and it's going out to the village email list, I believe, for three weeks running. I think that's the way it's going to work. And so we'll be collecting this information and they'll be able to analyze it. And probably that's where their project will end. They'll run out of time, but we will have the data to work with. So um, I, I hope that turns out to be. Beverly, when did you say they're going to email the list? Um, soon. Oh, Jerry, Jerry approved it. Yes, yeah, soon, you know. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, Jerry, though, approved it. What's today? Thursday. I think he approved it on Tuesday. So it'll go out soon. Um, enforcement. Oh, there's one detachment 4 and 4A. 4A is the photograph Marlene took. We saw it last month. Um, it, it, it's a tree on the parkway, 990 the parkway that has been, it's a village tree and has not only been topped, but all of the branches have been lopped. So it, it's been severely pruned. And um, the, I guess Frank, Tavolacci is going to go out and just confirm that it's in the right of way and whether or not there's a permit on to have done this. And then if it is in the right of way and there's no permit, there'll be a violation issued on that. Good luck. Good work, Marlene. <laughs> Update on the new trees. Um, the order was placed this week for 36 new trees that were carried over from the fall list. So um, I don't know when they'll be delivered, but they'll be planted right away. And basically they'll be in the ground for the growing season, which is better than our spring plantings used to do. We used to be so late that it was kind of missing a season. Um, and draft letter, oh, I, I I drafted a letter, I didn't attach it, um, that we would send some of the trees on this list as well as going forward are beyond the right of way, which we can do now under the law. And, um, but in order, you know, I, we need written permission, I think still to, for, um, you know, parks people to have in their hands when they go onto someone's property to plant a tree. So, or, subsequently if they're watering it because it's a village tree. Um, can you get that? Um, have, have letters gone out to residents on the list of the uh, the bro, the beyond the right of way? I mean for this current list of 36? Yeah, and, have those letters no, gone have, out? They have not because you got to get it approved, but I actually spoke to each of those people because that's when I was doing my list last fall. I, in those situations, I actually spoke to the property owners. So I know they want them. I even know where they want the trees, but I still think we need the written permission. Um, a similar, somewhat similar program, which was the Board of Trustees idea of offering tree scholarships in areas like Washingtonville, where we would actually give them the tree, but also the maintenance of the tree <laughs> has been referred, Nora, you can tell us, that was referred to the state? The idea of planting in the right-of-way was, was, was referred to the state attorney general because it, we're not sure we can do it. So that we're waiting for a return response from the state, from the attorney general about this. Even on regular BROW? Yeah, that's the, that was the, that's the request, yes. So we're waiting for the, for this, Yes, we're waiting for the attorney general to opine because there was an opinion from 
the 70s that it was not something we could do. Yeah, I think that there, there were court cases that changed that, but I'm sure the Attorney General knows more about that than I do. So we're waiting for, we're waiting for that. It went out at the end of January. Okay, how long do these things usually take? Because we're ready, almost ready it to plan. It depends. That's the answer. It depends. I mean, right. they don't have they they don't have to comply with the deadline. We're asking them for a favor. Okay. Um. So, hopefully, it'll hopefully we'll hear soon. We haven't heard yet. Um. Oh, here's another. Good, um, no, oh, the, I, here's the question. Tree damage caused by Con Ed pruning update. Um, Marlene, are you building the file of images? We should send you them, trees that are killed or damaged, you know, severely muted, <laughs> unmute. I only have the one image of the okay. terrible I, I have a couple, I know, yeah. I, know. I yeah. have a couple. No, this is the beginning of a process, but I, I, I feel that, you know, we invest so much in these trees and they're one asset that gets more valuable every, mm -hmm. every year. This is something for the county to think about. Yeah, yeah um, definitely. It's a big problem. If, well, we don't want to lose power if we it could put some sort of, I don't know, somehow find a solution. But I think if we start to build a file showing trees that have, obviously been killed and taken out by this terrible pruning they're doing, it will help. So I have a couple that I will look for and pull. Um, it, I know- we're, we're happy to interact with Con Edison or any of the utilities if you have documented example of it where we need to- oh, Okay, we do. That's what we're starting to build a file of to show it. Okay. Um, thank you. The one from last that. time was especially egregious, the, the tree <clears throat> photograph last time. Yeah, there was a photograph of one that was removed because it it was just been killed because it was so badly pruned. Uh, the what? That's the one in front of the um, community counseling center on yeah. Stanley. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Folks, I'm going to jump. Uh, my half an hour is up, but if you want to follow up on that last thing, Nora, just let me know and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank Anything you. Anything else at the county? Feel free to reach out. Thanks, Thank George. Thank you, George. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thanks for your okay. service. This is volunteer at its finest, right here. It Thanks. is. Take care. Thank you. You too. Um, Gail, tree tags. Have you had a chance to take a look at the tree tags for new trees? I have not. Okay. Sorry. That's, I know. Uh, I had to be on a back burner right now. I understand. But, but really it's, good it's idea. very close to a front burner. I, and hopefully it'll be there soon. <laughs> okay. Um, New business. Here's another great village innovation. I sent around a copy of this, but I, I had occasion to get together with Jeff Vaughn, who's the foreman of parks, um, to look at a location on Brook. He didn't really, you know, he wanted to know where I wanted to put it because there's a really narrow planting strip and he was worried about that. And then in the course of it, he showed me, it's a dreadful name, but he'd just come back from a conference where they talked about tree diapers. Um, and I think it needs a new marketing. <laughs> However, it's a really interesting idea because you know how we finally managed to launch the watering program with the gator bags and it made a huge difference in the survival rate of the trees, but it, you know, there's a lot of work involved with it. These rings are mats that are pre-soaked and go around the tree when it's planted. So it, another, it's also forming a mulch ring, which is something we'd wanted to protect from trimmer damage. But in addition to that, they absorb groundwater whenever it rains so that if there's been a recent rain, the village does not need to, to put in the labor and the fuel to go out and fill the tree bags according to a schedule. They uh, work a lot uh, really, what? Question: If they they're holding on to the water, do they let release yeah, the water release into it. the ground? Yeah, but not while it's raining. They, you know, it, so it's also not. It's the gator bags if they get filled, and then we have a downpour, and then they just get a huge amount of water. Apparently, these absorb, absorb, and then they slowly release. And and who? Um, how did you hear about this? Jeff Hahn, who's the foreman for parks. 
um, why don't we try a few of them? Well, he would like to. What he um, is the 36 he's putting in this spring, he was going to use it. And then for the fall planting, which of course is much larger, he was thinking we could test half and half perhaps and see how they do. One of these pieces of information um, is from a test that was done somewhere in which they did, you know, put them on some trees and not on others just to show that they worked. But we'll have they data put back. them on. I'm a little concerned. I would like like to know hear some data about how they work on brand new planted trees That's versus trees does. that have been there for a year. Are they are they designed specifically for brand new trees? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I feel, I'm feeling very protective for those 36 trees. We usually get like a hundred, you know, or oh, more. And yeah, I know. Those, those 36, you know, this will help them great. I just don't want to experiment. Well, all I can say, no, I think I, 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 there apparently has been testing. I think I sent the information around if you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, and you may have more questions. He also heard a presentation about it and felt that it was a better system, um, that it actually distributes the water better because um, they're not getting, having a gator bag dump all the water on them during rain. So they're absorbing rainwater and then releasing it later. But I will say that, you know, they're gonna be watching them. And if a tree, the trees start to look as if they're drying out or struggling, well, first of all, they'll be watering the rings when there hasn't been rain. But second, I, um, I, I think from what I understand, they it eliminates or it reduces the need to fill the gator bags. Yeah, it does. If, if it rain, if it if it rains, gator bags don't accept water. It just goes it, like it runs off the gator bag. Doesn't it, 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 the gator bags don't collect rainwater? You have to actually fill them. So in this situation, these would collect rainwater and save it for a while, but they can still also be watered. If we have a drought. If we yeah, if we have a drought. But they would certainly, as Nora said, they would also save on needing. It, basically, the watering is done on a schedule. They have someone who just drives around the village and waters everything continuously and so it's not only it would take less of that time it also you know it involves fuel costs and things like that so sounds good okay we want to now, beverly you said we're going to start with the using that on the 36 new trees mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. thanks and then they'll be watched during the summer and at the moment, he'd like to then, you know, do half and half next fall, gator bags and these things. I wish they had a different name. <laughs> we just call them these things. These, these things. things. <laughs> these things. I'd call, call them the tree donuts. Tree donuts. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's better. better. People I like actually, donuts. That might be what Jeff called them. He did not call them tree diapers. He had another word, but I don't remember what it was. It might have been donut. Um, Okay, do we want, I mean, I don't think it's our decision, but we could at least vote to endorse the test. Someone want to move to approve the test of these? Anyone? Okay, Marlene, move. Second? There's not many of you. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, Gail and I are in favor. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, Where are we? Okay. Um, another, yet another sign that things are changing in the village and getting better for the care of trees is um, I heard early this week from Jerry that his acting foreman of DPW, Mark Ferreira, uh, was at 314 Carroll with the Westchester Joint Waterworks because they had to install some equipment in the ground and the equipment had to go right where we had 
an established tree. And we've been like cut the roots and put this box in the ground. And Mark looked at the situation and assessed sort of the whole location. And with them, you know, got them to work with him to find another location, which is like across the sidewalk away from the planting strip. And it's going to be, you know, Jerry, Jerry's quite confident that this won't damage the tree by putting it there. So I just like the way people are starting to think. Do you want me to measure, uh, uh, to mention uh, Mike Ferrara's name in the minutes? Yeah, that would be how do, you, how do you spell his last name? Um, F-E-R-R-A-R-O. It's, ja it's James. Oh, James, sorry. James. You're not Mike, right, James? Mark, yeah. Mark. 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 Mark, and he's with DPW. Yeah, he's the acting foreman. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, I have not spoken to Matt, so we can find out later. He was going to be looking at the financial benefits that come from planting trees around houses. Remember about two months ago, he spoke about things he had read about how heating costs and cooling costs and, and right. air quality. So I'm interested to hear what else he's put together. Um, Gail, we, we um, joint book discussion. Um, I think we've I'm kind of- my mind about the book. <laughs> okay. Well, we can still, I, I actually am picking up a book tomorrow that I think might be good. And it's called Planting, I think it's called Planting in a Post Wild World. And so that one might be a possibility too. Um, anyway, Gail, I thought that because our first venture at book meet, book discussions and author talks was so successful, we want to have the right book. And um, it would be really nice to have another, you know, to do it again. So I'll look at this book and see if... Uh, I'm confused. Gail, you don't want to do the Entangled Life one? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm withdrawing that suggestion. Yeah. Okay. 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 But so should I put anything in the minutes regarding this um, new book or wait? That we're still, you know, you uh, thinking of, a, we're working on selecting a okay. recommended book for an, uh, a book club. Okay, thank you. Did you actually get so far as to set a date with the library? I know you talked to them. No. Okay. So they're no, just- But they, they would it. love to partner with us again and, uh, and have another, uh, community read and uh, another discussion with, with an author. Okay. Are, yeah. are you, so you're looking to have the author as part of it? If possible, you know, if that's. Uh, because I went, yes. to, I went to a workshop last night and the author, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the one book, five communities. So there are five different programs. When, you, but, um, it's Rye, Harrison, Mamaronek, Larchmont, and Nourishell. But the author wasn't there. There were two other people who were experts in the field talking about a specific chapter. So, Interesting. you know, so that, that might give you more flexibility. If you can't get an author, you might have a book, but there might be somebody who's really familiar with the book or the practices and could, could lead the discussion. So, right, right. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Let's find a book first <laughs> and work it out. The one that I'm talking about, I was thinking, the one that I'm planning to look at um, was published about four years ago, I think. So maybe the author's not in a whole lot of demand. Um, also, Gail, you had another really interesting idea, which is you know, tree committee field trips to several places. Did you want to talk about those? Yeah, I thought uh, it might be nice to do a field trip. And although it's not in the village of Mamaroneck, they're, they're, you know, just as a, a place to gather and draw inspiration, I thought maybe we could do a tree committee um, walk at the Sheldrake Environmental Center. I'm on staff there, I'm a staff naturalist, and I would be happy not, you know, to lead a walk, a tree walk. So that sounds great. Yeah, I think so too. 
Is this yeah. something you were thinking just for the committee or is this something that you would, we would help? Well, with? I was thinking of the committee, Nora, are we allowed to do that? Or if we meet for a tree walk, does, is that something that has to be offered to the public as well? Yeah, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's a site visit, so it has to be, yeah, it has to be publicly, I, I you know, if the planning board goes to look at a site, it has to be publicly noticed unless it's small, less than a quorum. Um, but on the other hand, since we're having Sheldrake do walks, is that some is that a program we could do? Like having one of it's, our- It's not in the village of Mamaroneck. I don't know if that matters. Like, can we sponsor a program that's in Larchmont? I don't, you know, I don't know why, I don't know why we couldn't because it's a, you know, it's not, you know, we do, I mean, we have so many programs, the, the rec programs are intermunicipal. You know, we work with the village of Large Mount, we work with the town of Mamaroneck, we work with Rye Town. So I don't know why we couldn't do that. And that might be just broadening the horizons a little bit. Okay, we, in that case, we might want to consider doing the walk at the Sheldrake River Trails, which is also sort of part of, uh, where Sheldrake does walks. The only reason I'm saying uh, Sheldrake River Trails is that it's not, it's very close to the village of Mamarina. It is still in, I believe it's in the village of Larchmont, but it's, um, you access it, you can access it at Rockland Avenue. Um, you know, not far from Mamarina. So we could do a walk there instead. This may sound like a crazy question, but does anybody have a stethoscope? I actually do. <laughs> it would be great if you could bring one because we could listen and hear the, a tree's heartbeat if the sap really? begins to flow. If we, if Ooh. the timing is lucky, yeah. Um, you could hear sap flowing through a stethoscope. Oh my goodness. When it begins to flow. Yeah, yeah. How long does it flow? Is it just a month or something? Uh, I don't know, but you know, this, it's going to get turned on real soon. Yeah, I know. I'm getting my last pruning in right now. Uh, I just made a note to try and figure out tomorrow how, whether we can do a program offsite. Okay. okay. Can you let us know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, I, and just remind me if you don't hear from me. Okay. Okay. Um, and then you had also suggested that we go and look at that small park by I-95 that I've never heard of. Yes, it's, it's not a park like the way we think of a park as a beautiful place where you can pursue different leisure activities or just walk and enjoy you know, the beauty. It's not really, I would say it's not beautiful, but it's very important. It's a buffer between 95 and and you know center street and and you know the residential area washingtonville all of that which and that's the whole area that is sorely in need of trees that very important buffer it mm -hmm. um it does a lot of things there's and it's right between the river i i think it's the sheldrake river is it nora is yeah. that the sheldrake or is that a different river i think it's the sheldrake river it's on the Sheldrake side. Yeah, it's on the okay. Sheldrake. Well, I'm not hundred percent sure, but anyway, there is a river. It's between the river and 95. 95 is up high. And then there's a strip of land with like a hill that just continues. And over here is the river. And then you have houses on the other side, you know, a little bit of land and houses. There is a path to walk along where it, the path begins off of Fenimore, when you enter on the right side, there's a, a community garden. I kind of remember when uh, Rich Slingerland, uh, several uh, or two oh, wow. village yeah. managers ago, I think he, he worked on that, having that happen, like setting up the community garden. There's a community garden there, but it takes up a very small percentage of all of this land. It's important land. It, it will filter the air. It will filter pollution. It can, you know, trees can gather up water that's coming down this hill and coming up from the river. And I think we need to look at it. And it will. It also cools air. 
and that will help air flow. You know, if it's giving off cool air and hot air is falling, you get, you know, it can help create a little bit of a breeze that way. There are just so many potential benefits. I think we need to look at it. Okay. Um, so this is, I, I would say, rather than like a beautiful leisure spot, at least at this point, it's more of like utilitarian. Working, uh, working trees. So yes, hardworking trees. And we can get a lot more trees in there than we can yeah. on like the right of way, you know. What's this, yeah. So what's this, what's, it's off Fenimore, correct? It's off Fenimore. Gosh, I, do you remember, did I tell you the name of it? I mean, I could find it on a GPS. All right, let me take it. Actually, I'm not sure there's a name on it, but I looked at it with Catherine De Hayes. She showed it to me, and I honestly didn't know it existed. I and it, it ends. Um, it ends where that bocce court is. Yeah. Yep. Or it, it, you know, I guess you could enter there, or you could enter at Fenimore. So. I think there's a name to that park, but. Oh, I, now I'm blanking on the name of the park, but it, I will think I'll, I'll, it'll come to me. If you hadn't said that, I would have. So Nora, if we plan to go there, whoever from the committee can go and we also notice it, how far in advance do we need to do that? Um, well, if, if you're, I mean, if you're, if you're having a program there or having a meeting there, it's three days and 72 hours in advance. Okay. I mean, I, I, we're not having a meeting there. We would just be going to look at it, an inspection. Uh, but if you, that's considered a meeting, you okay. know. So okay. I'm on Google map and there's no name for that area, but it does show a path. And it shows the river. And that is the Sheldrake River. It's definitely the Sheldrake River, yeah. Is it considered yeah. part of the Leather Stocking Trail, maybe? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Okay. It's on the other side of 95. Oh. Yeah, it's on like the Palmer Avenue side or the uh, the southern southern side of 95. So you're, you, what you're saying is it's right along the bend of the Sheldrake River and it's like Washington Street? Well, it goes from Fenimore mm -hmm. to the intersection, like where Grand Street bends and becomes Plaza Avenue. Yep, yep. If, if I may. That, that park is Bob Walker Park. Walker Park, W-A-L-K-E-R? Bob Walker Park, yeah. Bob Dennis, Walker. were you gonna say something? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say it runs parallel to uh, Northrop Avenue, uh, which it runs behind DPW there. So it's in between 95 and Northrop. Uh, I think there's a little community garden that was set yeah. up. There, yeah, not it's a little vegetable there. garden there. Mm -hmm. but like I... 20, 20 feet. But yeah, there, there is a walk through there. Um, uh, I've been through there twice, one with our code enforcer. Charlotte Mountain, um, and then once doing a follow up after the floods for mm -hmm. the debris that was there and mm -hmm. getting all that out of there. It, does it have many trees in that area now? It has trees, but there, you know, I think we need to look at it and see if there's room for more trees and what kind of species are there. And, you know, if we could fill canopy a bit more. Yeah, also, there may be a lot of invasive vines and things. Yeah, would would uh, would it be beneficial to have a willow? Catherine had asked about having a willow there to help with um, flooding. There's black, yeah, there's apparently black willow. I, I've been looking up native trees that are also very good around water because um, Committee for the Environment is applying for this. Mm -hmm. And um, one tree that's great with with being on water banks is black willow. It's not the weeping willow that everyone thinks of. Right. Because, but it's much it's a much sturdier tree actually, and it is also a very good host for beneficial insects. So that's a, one that would be good to put in. Um, oaks, of course, are always good. Yeah. And there's something I heard about called a cottonwood tree, but I'm not. I've got to check the um, native range on it. I'm not completely sure. There are cottonwoods in this area because I see the, the cotton from them. You know, uh, uh, there's a point in the spring where it looks like there is snow 
like piling oh. up against the curbs. That's from the cottonwood. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so they apparently are also really drink up a lot of water. So those that way okay. we can multiple species. Okay, uh, we we need to look. And I don't know. There may be. I, I don't know if there's salt runoff. Do they salt ninety five? They do, right? Oh yeah, all the time. So there's going to be a lot of runoff uh, from ninety five onto this area. Yeah, I, it, I think it's worthwhile taking a look at what species are growing there because whatever is growing there has proven that it's it can survive. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's called Bob B O B Walker Park. Oh, B B U B Bob. Uh, a bub, okay. That'll be interesting. So would a Sunday afternoon sometime work for people? That would work for me. Okay. Maybe when Thanks. we get a little past the mud season. Yeah. <laughs> I've got boots. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know, me as well. Um, might be easier to identify the species if it's not. That's true. I, I, I'm not very Later in the spring. That's Best case, oh. I'm not good at that. And without leaves, I'm really hopeless. Oh, I have a book. I could do it with my book. Anyway, I so find we'll find a we'll we'll find a day that might work for people, and we'll notice it. Okay. Um, any other business anyone wants to bring up? I had a question. Um, I got some updates to the minutes after I submitted it. So, do I? What, yeah, what, what, we didn't, in fact, we didn't vote on the minutes, come to think of it. So, do you want to tell us what they are? Um, I, I have it in the email. One is, uh, I think Marlene sent me something about, a comment about Arbor Day, and then Gail said something, but I, I don't have it handy with me. Um, I, I, yeah, I had sent you um, a bunch of changes, but you never well, got, got it. Gail, so I, I picked up your it change, Gail, I picked up your changes when I said Oh, great. That. Okay, so You're today it was just, Marlene, it was just the thing about um, it adding in the row, you know, uh, across whatever the address was, across um, bleaker in the row, rather right. than across the address bleaker row, because it's not the bleaker, it's in the row. It, it, it just, I think it'll be clearer where the tree is located. I think that was picked. one of the changes that I picked up. You had already sent that one. I didn't see it on the draft that uh, I got. No, you didn't. Oh, really? Yeah. That one it's thought, not on there. I must have missed that one. Okay. Um, sorry, because I remember. So, I mean, there, there are two small changes, but if I, when I make the changes, what do I do? Well, we need to approve the minutes. Marlene, what was your change? <laughs> you have to unmute, Marlene. I didn't want, I don't think we said to have a separate Arbor Day event. We said to combine it with oh. the, with Green Day. So that okay. was the okay. Okay. right. Okay, yeah. so with these changes, um, so we approve, what you'll do is you'll put them in, because the minutes that you sent, that we sent before is a draft. They need the final okay. minutes. Yeah. So, so which we changes we approve it? Motion to approve the minutes as amended. But we haven't seen the minutes as amended, so I don't think we could. Have, can we approve them if we haven't seen them? Even though we don't, even though we know what they are. Yeah, because you made the con as as they were. You could say as verbally amended. As yeah, as verbally amended. Okay. Okay. Motion. Thank you. Oh, second. Okay. Favor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So the minutes. I, I forgot about that. I'm sorry, because I, I was jumping ahead on the agenda. But um, that's what you'll do. You'll put those changes in and okay. submit them as final. You know, it's weird because I was checking my email again and I never got Gail's email with the changes. Yeah, I think we're all kind of struggling a little bit with the okay. system. <laughs> well, I, but I found it cool. in my sent email that it was sent um, and I resent well, I, I it. Had them that, you know, I, I didn't have them. Or maybe I had them. Uh, what I Ellen, did you did you receive it today when I resent it? Are you getting yeah, email? Yeah, yeah. But I when I went back to see on that day, I'm like, nope, it's so yeah, weird. Right. Yeah, yeah. But thank you, and and Beverly, thanks for your help with uh, getting oh, them in. You're welcome. Well, I just took my edited ones and dropped in Gail, so it wasn't hard. So, so. we're gonna have to. I, I realized that the last 
last month, I found a better way to send you my chat, my edits. So I'll talk to Gail and we'll both do them. Yeah, I mean, if I could see them, it's always yeah. easy. Yeah, well, <laughs> theoretically, I, I realize that's one of the weird things about the village system is that you have to actually download the edited, the marked up version to see them and it's complicated. There's an easier way to do it. Okay. Um, okay, anything else? I think we've done that. Anything else? Okay. Uh, are, are you going to go over the calendar notes? Because I had a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess we skipped. Oh, we don't have a date for our next meeting. Huh? Yeah, you, yeah, you do. We have we have a regular meeting date. Hold on. The <clears throat> hold on. Okay. It's March twenty fourth. No, that's the one oh, we talked about. That's April. this meeting. Hold on. April. April. By the way, congratulations, everyone. We managed to get our online meeting for March before they. <laughs> Sorry, um, it's April 28th. 28th. Is that in the conference room? We don't know yet. Okay. Um, so. It's in person, it, though. It's in person. Well, we, I, I, the, the, you know, the assumption is that come Wednesday next week, um, the governor will require in-person meetings. We're not going to be able to Zoom anymore. Um, so there's a slim chance that there might be a law passed allowing Zoom, but it doesn't look to be the case. So our, the date's the 28th. It will be in person. Um, the only other meeting that night is the Zoning Board of Appeals. And it's a work session, um, so they they would have the courtroom because they're televised. So it's probably in the Regatta conference room. Okay, that'll be different. Mm -hmm. um, okay, May twenty eighth. April twenty eighth. It's, it's been, been no. Yesterday, exactly. yesterday was the second anniversary of the last time the board of trustees met in person before the pandemic. You know, wow. we had a few meetings in June, July, August, because there was a hiatus with the Zoom, but it was, it's been two years, so just two years. Okay. It'll be 7.30 at the regatta, like old times? Yeah, like old, old times. Old times. Okay. <laughs> too bad. I really and new times for Ellen, right? Ellen, oh, the first time we say... actually get to meet you in person. <laughs> yeah. oh, we oh, did yeah. do that. We've already done that. Yeah. yeah. But of course, but um, is it easy to find the conference room in the regatta? I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. don't worry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The address and, is 123 Mamaronic Avenue. Very easy. Yeah, I know where the regatta is, but I just didn't know if they had a conference. It'll area. be very easy. They'll just be us there, basically. Yeah. And yeah. we'll hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, our next tree walk is scheduled in Florence, return to Florence Park, May 1, rain date, May 22nd. I, something came up, I don't remember what it was, but now I think I will not be able to go on May 1st. Um, I usually marked off the people who were registered. So in case I'm not there, is anyone else going to be free to go on that walk? I should be free to go on that walk. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to be there too. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, and I'll take pictures. Have, yeah, which I never remember to do. Um, that would be great. I mean, I hope I can go. I can't remember what came up, but I do remember <laughs> the problem. Um, and the clean and green day is not going to be sandwiched in as close as possible to Earth Day. This year, it's going to be May 7th. Oh, so I guess that's a Saturday, yeah. Uh, the time for the tree walk, is it one o'clock? Yeah, it's always one o'clock. Okay. And, and clean green day, is it 10? I don't know, actually. Right. I are usually right. I think oh, it's oh, sort I of forgot we are. ceremonies, but, but you know, you can really go through at any point and if you're gonna do a cleanup and just pick up the bags and the rakes and the gloves. And... 930. So we're not, we're not 930. having a table or anything. 9.30? Is it 9.30? Okay. 
we're not planning to do a table this year or anything. Okay. Well, if we want you to do anything for Arbor Day, yeah, that oh, would be the plan. that yeah. would be the time. Um, yeah. Like just give out the saplings from Con Ed, something simple like that. Yeah. Oh, I have to tell you, not from one of the, the uh, seeds we gave out, but I, the same batch of seeds. I think two years later, I gave them out to students um, in the class that I'm teaching. Uh, this was, I guess, in January. And mm -hmm. someone sent me a picture of two white oaks about that big oh, wow. growing from the seeds. I kept them, you know, I had um, scarified them, I think it's called, when you soak them. I forget if it's scarified or stratified. I soak them for 24 hours and then have refrigerated them for two years. <laughs> and they grew. And it was kind of an experiment and they're gorgeous. Oh, wow. Which, you know, that's really tree good. nursery people. We need a tree nursery and I'm working on that. I'm working on finding a location and I think we, and a partner to do this, a community partner. I, um, I, I, I mentioned that at the meeting last week yeah but when we were talking about the tree committee and the tree committee budget i mentioned that that was a, an, an idea that you all had to okay we okay. could have more than one tree nursery mm. we need as many trees as we can get yeah. because the they're not all need gonna volunteers to, to staff them do we need I wonder, some... yeah i wonder if you could get people to like be like to be a tree nurse to be a tree nursery person at home like they would take care of their little tree and then it gets turned over to the village for planting like fostering. That's a great idea. Mm. Well, you know, they used to have that at Bellows. When January, my daughter, yeah. January. It was, was January. It January? Yeah. No, no, it was at Bellows. My really? daughter's 32 years old. And when yeah. she was a, in first grade at Bellows, they had a tree. They didn't have a Daniel Warren then. They oh. had a tree planting program at Bellows. Oh, I don't remember They that. would watch I... trees grow on the premises of Bellows. In what's now the Peace Garden. Yes. Yep. 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 Are those so trees really still cool. there? I, you know, I don't know. I haven't really visited, but that was that was something that they did when she was in first grade. It was a really cool project. So all of our schools, if all of the schools in the village did that, that would be four little nurseries. Mm -hmm. What a great mm -hmm. way for the kids to learn about trees. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. That would offer a concept. How and, exciting it would be when they came to dig them up too. Like that would be a whole yeah. other yeah. level of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of fun. I tried to get that going, but I, I you know, I kind of hit a bit of a dead end or got sidetracked into a sustainability committee, which was really not, I really wanted to like plant trees with children, mm. with classes. Um, Oh, you may get another so, chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, and also religious organizations. Mm. Uh, institutions might be interested. Westchester Jewish Center has a huge piece of property. So, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of room for trees to grow there. And if anyone else has a suggestion, um, that would be great. Chair board, um, this is Dennis, the uh, assistant building inspector. So the DEC has a seedling program. I don't know if you're probably aware of it and I'm just kind of revisiting it for you, uh, but they have a seedling program and I believe the deadline to purchase from them is May. And the, the prices of the trees are very, very inexpensive, but they are seedlings. I think the tallest you could possibly get is three feet, depending on the species. So um, it's on the DEC.NY website. Oh. Um, you know, uh, and I, I recommend it. I, I've purchased from them before oh. uh, as a project manager, um, you know, to, to populate a, a partially empty lot to make sure it was covered. Um, and then when it comes time to planting trees, um, have you reached out to any other community organizations or volunteers to, to assist with, let's say the 36 trees that are coming or would that be done by the village? And the that's, village? that's done by the village, but I think that it's, you know, a, a really interesting idea to get, you know, as a way to get people to buy in to 
supporting the trees if we did have places where volunteers were planting also. Is this Sarah? Sarah's here. Uh, hi, this is Sarah is welcome. We're almost finished, but I'm glad you came anyway. Oh, well, I've been here. Oh, I, you've been I'm here. Sorry, I didn't see, I, I didn't see oh. in the attendees. I, that's my fault. No, no worries. Did you, were you able to hear? Yeah, yeah, I okay. wasn't sure how it worked, so I thought I was just, uh, okay. you know, like the audience I was listening in for the last, uh, I don't know, hour. Okay, great. That's Sarah, great. what's your name? Because your your little uh, Zoom oh, cube says sorry. Sunshine Sarah Yoga. So <laughs> My name is Sarah Mignano. Uh, how do you spell that? There you go. Ah, thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Are you um, a yoga I teacher? Oh. What's that? Are you a yoga instructor? I am. <laughs> I am <yes. laughs> Did you nice do some you, uh, yoga at a retreat at the Sheldrake Environmental Center once? I did not. No, that was, I'm actually pretty new to the area. Um, I guess actually one year. I've been here one year now, but that was not me. But maybe one day. Well, great to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. I, I had one more question for Dennis about the seedlings. How, how big are they? So I'm, I'm actually uh, plugging away to get to the website right now. So at least I have something more tangible to talk about. Um, so there's, I, I got the order sheet here. Uh, bu, 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 bum. So they have, uh, let's just say, this is the, the temp sheet that they have, a Norway spruce, um, 100 seedlings for $55. Um, and then there's a habitat packet, 30 packets for $30. But uh, you know, I, I haven't gotten to the sizes, but before I believe the tallest you can get was two and a half, three feet. Oh, uh, that's pretty tall. You know, so, you know, it, it's there and it's an idea. So what I'll do is I'll forward, I'll forward the website uh, to the group email, the group chain. So Apparently I can, I can send emails out, but I can't get them because I sent something about the, the tree diaper. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> didn't see it, didn't see it. No, okay, so maybe it didn't go through. Everybody just happened to ring at the time. I'm so, uh, Dennis, I'm sending you a test from my village email right now. Let's see. Thanks. Let's see. Go ahead. Sorry. To you know, the other thing, place where that might be very useful, the Committee for the Environment has applied for a grant um, to create pollinator gardens and also to plant along some of the waterways, plant trees along some of the waterways, and, they, you know, it's, it'll be limited. The money's gonna be used for a lot of different things. Um, th this program might be a really good way to get more trees into the waterway plantings. If we look at- The Arbor Tree Foundation um, also sells trees about the same size and they charge, yeah. You know, I don't know, maybe two dollars a tree, something like that. It's been a few years since I got them, but um, I've ordered and planted from their trees too. They they come bare root. Um, Dennis, do you know if those trees come bare root as well? Um, I believe so. Yeah, I yeah, mean, for so what at least uh, what I what I picked up. Yeah, so they nothing was in pots. Everything was in plastic. Um, yeah, that's so. Yeah, it's it's bare root. Uh, well, sorry, no. So there there is soil. It's not complete bare root, but you know, depending on your de definition of bare root. Well, they're so, not bound up in burlap or anything. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not, not in a pot. They're, not, they're, they're not in like a container of soil. So they either Correct. have to go in the ground. Well, not in. They, there's a way to you have to kind of revive them. There's a certain process, and if you're not ready to plant them, they have to be refrigerated the entire tree which I've done <laughs> in an industrial size refrigerator. Anyway, those are both really good sources because if we could get in this waterway planting, especially if we can get more trees. We would need protective tubing so that animals don't eat them. Oh, anything uh, that goes in that area, they're gonna have to be protected. The little tiny trees are gonna have to be protected from deer, rabbits. All those we had a problem with rabbits put up chicken wire all along and yeah, a few of the trees survived. Yeah. Oh, about two thirds were eaten. Hmm. Were they all protected and they got through? 
Yeah. Okay. They pulled it off. <laughs> you know, mm. they're hungry. They're developing thumbs. <laughs> yeah. And we feel like Farmer McGregor. I, I farm for the deer in my neighborhood. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Um, thank you, everyone. And um, we may I have a motion to adjourn? It is 8.44. I make a motion yeah. to adjourn. Gail motions. Marlene second. Sarah, do you want a second? Sarah second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, good night. And thank you. Good night, Dennis. Good night everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good congratulations night. again, Dennis. And welcome, Sarah. Yeah, thank congratulations, you. Dennis. <laughs> welcome, Sarah. Okay, bye bye. Good thank night. you. Bye, thank you everyone. Very, thank you very much. Great, great. I really appreciate your coming. Thanks for having me. Bye. 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 Right. And okay. Nora, I didn't receive that email. So, okay. You want me to tell Cliff? Um, you know,